on selections, the Affinity Workbook for Affinity Photo Workbook, um, starting on page 106, selections, and we're using the selection brush tool. Now, I did one short video previous to this, just working through sec parts one, two, and three, sections one, two, and three, creating a selection. Now, I'll just do that quickly again, because in this video, I want to move on to parts four, five, six, and seven. These are not terribly easy, but on the desktop they are. On the iPad, you've got to hunt around a little bit for what you want. Um, this is beginning page 108 of, of the workbook, if you have that. If not, let's just follow along. Now I've got to bring back my image, which I've stored on the cloud. There's the selection brush image and the tool. Now remember, I've got to go to the selections persona. You can see the little purple dot outlined above there. It's on the hand so I can move around. Let's just squeeze that image in there so it all fits. Um, we can see all sides of the image. Now the selection, smart selection brush tool is there. Remember the tricky bit, I've got to be really quick with this to select and sh the sharp edges. Now you'll see the width down the bottom here is 201 pixels. These settings stay there from job to job. Uh, something you have to be careful of. I set that at 201.3 in the previous exercise and it's still there. I do wish Affinity would put a reset button somewhere in this thing so you can reset your tools back to where they, like a default setting. Okay, now let's get the selection working. No, you see, I wasn't quite quick enough for that. Right to left. No. No. Too short. There it goes. Now I got it right. Some You'll just have to persevere with this because it's quite tricky to get just the pressure right and the length of drag, if you like, right. If you do it slowly, it won't work. Well, I can't get it to work. Now what we've got is the selection. Moving right along, from the toolbar, choose Invert Selection. This will now select the building instead of the sky. Now the toolbar in this case is our commands menu up the top there. You can see the commands menu there. Document, commands, photo selections. We're in the selection persona and we want the commands menu. There we go. Now, invert selection. If you look now at the image, you'll see the crawling ants are surrounding the building, not the sky. Interesting. Now from the toolbar again, choose Auto Contrast. Toolbar, Auto Contrast. Where? No Auto Contrast in that toolbar, at the Commands bar. So we can go to Filters, which is the little funnel on the right hand side. We don't want all filters, it takes you too long to find them. We want filters, we want colours, the colour filter and find auto, there's auto colour, there's auto contrast. How cool is that? A preset does the auto contrast, sharpens up the building nicely. The contrast of the building will increase. This helps bring out the tone against the flat sky. Now again, from the filters menu, choose sharpen. From the filters menu, colours, and there's sharpen at the top. So the filters menu is now sharpen, we want clarity. There's clarity right at the top. It's probably remembering it from the last time I did this. There's clarity. Selected. Now you see down the bottom there, it's got clarity 0%. Okay, now we want to increase that to 20, 30... 50%. You can see down the bottom there, that's 50%. And then click Apply. That's applied it to the thing. From the toolbar, choose Deselect 
to remove the selections and its marquees. So if you want to get rid of the crawling ants, you can either hold your finger anywhere outside the thing and click deselect, or go up to the commands and click deselect there. And there are your ants gone. Applying the clarity filter to just the selection of the building will avoid the halo effect that typically occurs when using this filter with high contrast edges. Now I've seen people on the on the um, Facebook groups asking about how to get rid of that halo effect. So what you've got to do is remember to use clarity and increase the clarity and that will get rid of the halo effect. Okay, that's it for this section. That's the first uh, the first selection of selections tools and it's select the selection brush tool. Oh, what a tongue twister. Okay, moving right along, we'll move on to the next section. I can turn the page of the book. Oh, we don't want to do that. The next one is creating a flood selection, the next one in the book. Okay, sorry about that little hiccup at the end there. I nearly tore the page of my book. 